Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be doing a stencil girl piece for their blog, creating rich layers using lots and lots of stencils. So I'm starting off my Dina Wakeley journal and just gessoing the base of the pages. I don't tend to gesso very much in my journals, but when I'm doing a page like this where I know I'm going to be putting lots of layers and wiping some of the layers off, I find having my pages sealed with gesso first helps um, that a lot. So it is personal preference, um, but for some of the techniques I'm using on this, um, using a gesso page will really help. So I'm starting off with some lighter colours to begin with because again I want to build up the depth but I want to keep some brightness on the page. So I've got some yellow and I'm just spreading it out on to my journal page in a sort of haphazard way. I haven't covered most of the page. It's quite thick um, so I did have a slightly watery brush but not too watery so the paint would spread out nice and neatly over the page. One of the things that I'll do between each of my layers is make sure that it is dry before I go into the next layer. And the reason for that is obviously colour mixing. So I want to be able to put this blue on, the turquoise, and you can see where I had sort of a watery, not clean brush on one side, it's very green, whereas on the other side I've got a nice um, blue or turquoise contrast to my yellow. So I've just got this fabulous stencil called Stencil, which is um, lots of different circles, and it's one of my favourite stencils. And um, for backgrounds, I love the fact that it's just a mix of different circles and different shapes and sizes. Um, it just works really, really well and gives you some really cool patterns. I'm going in with my next layer now and I'm going in with a fuchsia colour. And when I'm doing these pages, I, I tend to stick to these three colours, sort of the yellow, the cyan and sort of a magenta-ish colour because um, it's, I suppose, type a, a triad, it's a type of primary colours, but I, I, it's just something that really appeals to me. I also tend to use, uh, repeat the same stencil over and over when I'm doing the background, so you've got a little bit of unity. So again, one of the reasons I really like that stencil is just by moving it in a different direction, you're going to have different sized um, circles over different areas overlapping. One of the things I've been playing around with in my journals recently is doing some gel printing in them. And it's just another way of applying a stencil to a surface. Now I've got this stencil, it's actually part of a much larger stencil that I cut in half because I love the script. I'm gel printing that into my journal so you can see the, the um, contrast with the, the marine blue that I've got in there. I'm also using the leftover paint on my roller, roller into the edges so I get this sort of really grungy effect. When I put my stencil down onto my gel print however I did put it upside down because I wanted the words, even though they're not really readable, I wanted them to print into my journal um, the right way up so to speak. So just be aware when you're using um, gel prints that um, you need to think about how you put your stencil down on the page so that you can see it. I'm playing with one of the new Janine Oliver stencils. I think this is called Grace, I'm not 100% sure, um, to put in as my focal image. So I really, really love the Stencil Girl um, portraits. I find them really useful for making... Um, focal images on my page. Sorry, I just had a mental blank. And the 6x6 images are really, really handy because they um, make a perfect head and body into your journals and they're big enough and have enough detail that they sort of work together. So I tend to combine any stencil, usually with text, because I do have a love affair with text, to make a sort of random body shape or extend the body down and then have the head at the top. One of the things I always do with any image I add to my page is I always put in the whites of the eyes and the catch-alls. I find that just makes a real focal image to the page. It just dry, draws your eye to it. Usually when I'm sort of playing around, I sort of leave that to last. But in this case, I did it sort of early on, which I'm really glad I did because it gave me a bit of a focus on the page. I was finding that my image was a little bit dark because I had that marine sort of blue colour in the background and the, the rich red that everything was getting a little bit lost so I'm just going around with really scribbly lines and a white pen 
just to sort of push the image out um, into the um, foreground a little bit more. I'm also going around with the Stabilo Ore Pencil and going to wet it and what that's going to do is push the again image out from the background or push push the background into the background a little bit and give a little bit of a shadow to my figure so it does stand out from the crowd so to speak. So when I've done that the Stabilo Oil Pencil is a water soluble pencil um, you can sort of wet it and sponge any extra bits away. I'm also using a Stabilo Woody just to put a little bit of colour into the face and into the hair. So these are the same pencils, they're actually the kid version of the Stabilo Oil Pencil. Um, so they're big and chunky and but they're great for mic making. And as I was doing this I um, decided I might play around with some more stencils because I didn't have enough on my page. So I thought this would make a great border stencil. Um, and this is one by Ray Misman, I think is how you pronounce it, which I really loved. So, and I love the contrast of this really beautiful bronzy gold colour on the page. Now, I did something really silly here, was, which was I switched my stencil over without wiping the other side. So I've got a bit of a mucky part on my stencil, but that's okay. Um, because I was going to cover it up in the end. So you can sort of see these beautiful gold highlights sort of coming up through which again in the original page are kind of subtle but when you move the page and the light catches it it just gets this beautiful effect on it. While I was doing a little bit of mic making I also saw this stencil that I thought hmm I don't have enough on here so I'm going to add some more in. So again I've gone back to the night so that dark blue just to add a little bit more mic making. Now you'll notice I haven't really used any black on this page and I don't tend to very often unless I'm doing fine detail with a pen over the background. I find that using um, a dark navy blue or um, a Payne's grey gives me um, a much more subtle effect in the end. So I um, tend to stick to those colours when I'm stenciling. While I was doing this, I was trying to think of what I actually wanted to put on to this. So I have just had a, <laughs> a little stint in hospital. I've had um, a broken wrist earlier this year. So I've, I've been through the wars a little bit and um, I decided that this is going to be a little bit of a mantra to me to tell me that I've been pretty tough this year in, in what I've done, that I've kept going and, um, you know, dealt with with what's what's come at me so uh, that's where the the words for this came from so I really like the way that um, particularly a lot of the stencil girl stencils have a really strong um, front facing face that you know this person or this figure is telling you something you need to listen to it and uh, quite often in my art journals I like to listen to what my pages are telling me so I'm writing you are tough and I'm deliberately putting the tough across both pages um, so it ties both pages together obviously but also it helps cover up that little bit of a boo-boo I had on my um, doll as well. I'm also because I have a little bit of white paint left and I really like this stencil decided that I was going to put some a little bit of white on this page just to sort of echo some of that gold that I had there as well and put a little bit of lightness back on the page. I really loved how the strong white letters that have really gave a focus to the page because I had some paint left on my palette I'm just going into another page and using it as a bit of gesso on my next page so I've got some paint there ready to go for something in the future. The final thing I'm going to do is with my Inktense pencil again. This is in a dark navy blue go around the edges of my letters and do a drop shadow on them and just put in a little bit of a mark in the middle of my solid letters to give an idea of um, you know what letter they're supposed to be. Because the paper I'm working on is quite a thin paper um, and I've got a few layers of paint and so on, it drawing the pencil on I had to press down quite firmly to get sort of a line to it which gave a bit of an indent to the page. Again it didn't really bother me but just be aware that um, depending on what your paper weight is you might get you know, a little bit of indent into your book. So I'm just going round again and just um, touching it with a little bit of water. 
Great thing again like the Stabilo All Pencil is that this is water reactive so you can move it around, you can wipe it away if it goes somewhere you don't really want it to. However the difference between the Inktense Pencil and the Stabilo All Pencil is the Inktense will dry permanent so it will not move again now it's dry. So here's a close up of some of the pages so you can see all the rich layers, how that gold really adds a shine doing a little bit of pen work to highlight the details of the focal image and um, how the drop shadows push the stenciled image out from the back and again you can see those really really fine lines that have all come from stencils so just building up and building up and building up the main thing to think about is um, the colors that you use and making sure your layers are dry before you add your next layer so that you're getting true layers of color over the top. So I hope that helped you. Please check out the blog post which will be linked below so you can see the specifics and the stencils I've used and a link to Stencil Girl as well. Until next time, bye for now.